thank you. Good morning. My name is Michael Boland. I want to welcome you to the fourth in an ongoing series of workshops about the new Presidio Parklands project to talk about key park layers, and I'll talk in a minute about what that means. I just wanted to remind everybody that this Parklands project is a joint effort of the Presidio Trust, Golden Gate National Parks Conservancy, and National Park Service. So today we are going to look at key park layers. And, you know, any park is composed of a series of critical layers, a circulation layer, an open space layer, vegetation layer, um, uh, the views, the kind of social life of the space, the programmatic layer. Uh, and so we're going to talk a little bit about those today. They're an array of different layers, but there are a couple that we really want to focus on today. We want to talk about views. One of the things we've heard from the public over and over again is how extraordinary the views are. The second has to do with connections with circulation, with the way this fits into the growing web of pedestrian, bicycle, and vehicular circulation in the post. And we also want to talk about setting. And by setting, I mean, what are the kinds of experiences that you can expect to have on the parkland site after it's transformed? We've started this process with a series of actually five goals. They've morphed into six goals as we've worked on it. We want the work that we do here to honor the significance of the Presidio, both the fact that it's a National Historic Landmark District, and also honor the men and women who served our country here in the Presidio for many generations. We want to offer a magnificent experience of the Golden Gate, that this is going to be a new platform from which you will be able to enjoy unsurpassed views of not just the bridge, but the entire Golden Gate and this portion of the bay. That we welcome all, that we fulfill the purpose of the Presidio and national parks and the urban environment, like the Presidio, as a place that bring national park experiences to a broad cross-section of people throughout our community. That we integrate the natural landscape of Chrissy Field and the cultural landscape of the main post. This project lives at the intersection of these two really very distinct, very important, very multi-layered landscapes that have very different characters. People love those distinct characters and we want this site to complement them rather than compete with them. But also think about how they come together because they are very distinct. The main post and Chrissy Field have two very distinct characters and so we're really interested in the way those things come together on this site. Number five, create the best place to begin your Presidio experience. We've talked previously about the fact that this is the place where we're finally going to build a state-of-the-art Presidio Visitor Center. It's going to be in the uh, Bank and Post Office building. We're moving the Bank and Post Office to a new location. And we're really excited to be working with the Park Service and the Conservancy to create a vision for a new 21st century visitor center that will welcome urban populations and people from all over the country to the Presidio. Now we're going to finally have a really high quality visitor center where you can begin your Presidio experience right here at the edge of the parklands. And at the other edge of the parkland site down at Crucy Field in the vicinity of Building 603, we want to create an opportunity for thousands of young people to come to the Presidio and begin to develop a relationship with the Presidio and National Parks at the uh, Chrissy Field Center Youth Campus. So those are six goals that we are working on, trying to achieve, trying to strike the right balance between, because as you can see, there's some conflicts inherent in these goals, trying to uh, create the right balance between these goals and the parkland site. Now, one of the things that we've heard in our previous meetings is that people are having a little bit of difficulty understanding the scale of the site. Uh, and so we thought it would be interesting to actually layer the site over a series of landscapes that you all know. And this is the result. So just to show everybody, in the red outline you see the parkland site. So there it is layered over the airfield at Chrissy Field. The airfield's about 28 acres, so it's, you know, roughly half the size of the airfield, just to give you a sense of the scale of the whole site. Here it is against the parade, the portion of the parade that we've built so far. Here it is layered into the Great Lawn at Fort Mason. So you get a sense of the scale of that site. It's roughly like the Great Lawn at Fort Mason. And these are a series of landscapes, you know, Alamo Square, the Golden Gate Concourse, Civic Center, Stern Grove, Alta Plaza Park, Dolores Park. So it's a kind of roughly a Dolores Park-sized landscape. I think that actually comes the closest right there when you tuck the bits of Dolores Park in around the edges. But again, it gives you a sense of the scale of the site that we're talking about. It's not vast but it's also not small. And as at Dolores Park, it's the kind of space that can accommodate a variety of different kinds of experiences and a, lot of different, uh, a number of different kinds of qualities, uh, not only because of its scale, but also because of the change in elevation and the fact that it's really two sites. There's the upper plateau, and then there's the lower site down at the level of Chrissy Field. There are a series of different zones within the site. There's the visitor center complex, the observation post is right here. So in the vicinity of this, this visitor base camp where visitors will begin their experience of the Presidio, there are the tunnel top parklands. 
that we've always imagined would have a series of promontories or overlooks take advantage of the view. There's a small increment of replacement parking that makes up for the parking that we're planning to remove over here in the visitor center complex. There's the slope itself, this embankment, that is where the grade change of about 35 feet is absorbed from down at Chrissy Field up to the main post level. And then there is the Chrissy Field Center Youth Campus and the learning landscape down at the elevation of Chrissy Field. Those are the basic programmatic elements of the project. So just a couple of these layers that I wanted to speak for a minute about. Understanding the evolution of the site is really important in terms of understanding the kinds of landscape interventions that are appropriate and will preserve the character of the site. And I wanted to start with this photo because I really love it. It's a late 19th century photo. This is the building that's going to become the visitor center here, the bank and post office. And you can see there are a series of buildings. This is a site that was the sort of back of house area. You know, our sense of how to manage land today in an era when the Presidio is a national park is very different than the way you would th have thought about the land back in the day when it was an army base. You know, the back of house needed to be where the transportation came from, and the transportation initially came by water and then by railroad, and both those things came in down at the level of Chrissy Field. And so the back of house for the Army was really in this area, and this was one of those places. There were stables here and a series of back of house functions, and of course this was the guardhouse. So this site in the 19th century was pretty heavily developed with buildings. Here it is in 1870, and you get a sense of some of those buildings here, the stables. This is the guardhouse building. Um, this red blob here shows you where building 603 is, and of course that's a later building, but it also gives you a sense of how this site was perched at the edge of this network of wetlands. It spanned the whole level of Chrissy Field here, and of course we know that's a portion of the wetland that was recreated when Chrissy Field was restored, um, and that, that marsh at Chrissy Field sits about right here. But the site continues to evolve throughout its history it retains this sort of back of house character. Here is a picture in the 20s. This was the quartermaster depot down here. You see by that time, those earlier buildings had been removed, but there was a crisscrossing of paths and trails and pedestrian circulation that connected down to Chrissy Field, which of course is nice because that's something that now in a park context, we're very interested in doing, which is making sure there are good pedestrian connections between the main post and Chrissy Field. Just another image, an aerial from slightly later. This is before Doyle Drive is built. You can see all of the buildings that were down here adjacent to building 603. This is building 603, a whole collection of large warehouse buildings. And then this sort of crisscrossing of pedestrian circulation and also vehicular circulation that was on the site. And of course, this is the guardhouse. A slightly later image, you see some temporary buildings put back in the area that is now a parking lot here on the tunnel tops. The trees that remain today, those big cypress trees that are adjacent to the transit center, which is located right there. In 1950, Doyle Drive appears, but you see again, there were buildings all below here in the vicinity of Doyle Drive. And of course, the commissary building sits about right there right now. These buildings were all torn down to build the commissary building. A close-up shot of Doyle Drive. This is Halleck Street. This is Mason Street. Here's 603. Uh, this is the area where we've, that we've identified for the learning landscape. And this is building 201 that is currently sitting right over here on the bluff and after construction gets put back in nearly its historic location. It actually slides just a bit to the south. That was just a glimpse at the sort of evolving nature of the site because we've actually never presented the evolving character of the site and that people were interested in understanding what's actually been up on that bluff and what was its character through time. The second thing we've heard a lot about has to do with views. And the views on this site are really extraordinary. But the thing that's interesting about the site is the views are not only extraordinary looking out at the bay, and you get a glimpse of that in this top shot. Here we are. These are actually some photos that were taken out on the tunnels fairly recently. But you also get a sense of how really spectacular the views could be looking back up into the main post. And here you have a view up the Montgomery Street barracks, between the guardhouse and the barracks, looking up the parade, back towards the main post, up towards the officers' club. And the views are just as interesting and just as dramatic looking up as they are looking down. Here's a reminder of what the view will be like looking down. We've worked very hard and heard a lot of important feedback about ensuring that whatever we do out here on the Parkland site, we maintain this open view. And of course, what you will notice if you look carefully at this is there's no observation post 
sticking out right there and blocking the view because in this scheme we've taken it away. And you get a sense of how spectacular the view could be if this building was gone. As I mentioned earlier, there's a great opportunity to create a wonderful view back up. And so this is one early image that we developed that gives you a sense of the kind of experience you could have if you pulled the open space character of the main post down into the space and how stunning it would be to be able to look up and get this new perspective on the Montgomery Street barracks. And this is one of a series of studies that we've undertaken that begin to look at the way if we were to decide to replace the observation post with some new construction, how we might be able to position that in a way that it would really minimize the visual impact, that it would pull the building out of the view. And we've undertaken some studies looking at how we might be able to introduce some sort of programmatic facility into the space, tuck it into the slope, and have a green roof over the top of it so that it doesn't interrupt the view in the same way the observation post does. And this is an image that you've all seen. One of the concepts that we've been working on includes a programmatic space that has a habitable green roof. Some people have called it a kind of pair of butterfly wings. Whether you have both wings or you make it a one-winged butterfly, the concept is still that there would be a habitable green space on top of this building. When you get inside, you still have the opportunity to enjoy this incredible panorama out over the bay and towards the bridge and that this could be a programmatic facility that we use in, in somewhat the same way we use this facility where we have a number of different programs. And one of the things we've heard from the public quite a bit about is how desirable it is to get out of the cold. And for those of you who know what it's like here in August, uh, you can understand why there might be some desire to get in out of the cold. But the idea that we might create a space like this that could be used for informal public use and also public programming that you know, would function as a kind of winter garden, a kind of neutral space, is something that is in some of the schemes. And so we'll look forward to talking to you about that today. And here's just another view of how that might frame the view and, and sit on the landscape. And then lastly, there are a number of features that are woven into the project that are about creating platforms or opportunities for the public to enjoy the view. As you know, there are a series of scenic overlooks that are woven into the project along the edge. This is one of the images that many of you have seen before. This idea of a cantilevered overlook popping out over the edge, allowing people to really step out into the view and embrace the view. Because again, the view is something that we've heard a lot about. There's a lot of excitement and support about the view and also a, a real concern on the part of the public that we make sure to not uh, compete with the view so that we simply create beautiful ways to engage the view but not compete with the view. The third thing I wanted to talk briefly about is circulation. We've had a, quite a bit of feedback about circulation in our meetings to date and have begun to look at the diagram around circulation or a series of diagrams around circulation. And again, this is something we're really interested in speaking with everyone about today. But there's several circulation layers that we've been looking at. First has to do with how do pedestrians move through the space? How do they both move between the main post and Chrissy Field in, in a way that is quick and direct and also in a way that is accessible. So looking at it through both lenses because of course we want it to be accessible to everyone, people of different mobilities. Um, how do we also create a circulation experience that allows visitors who are moving east-west to swing out onto the space and enjoy it on their way to you know, the next set of tunnels over here, the Cemetery Bluff or on their way to the Golden Gate Bridge? We also are, have been very interested in, in thinking through the logic of bicycles. And of course, in the Presidio, there are two different networks of bicycles throughout the post. There's a network of multi-use trails. There also is a network of on-street bikeways. And so we're interested in having both of those systems come through the site, and we have some thinking about that series of networks that is on display in the back that we'd like to share with you. So that was first multi-use. This is about on-street bikeway traffic that goes around the site. And then transit. Transit is something that we're very interested in. We run the Presidigo shuttle as one way to get people back and forth. I take it every day to get to work. But we also have begun to give some thought to how we might work with Muni to expand transit to the site, as well as increase the accessibility using the Presidigo shuttle. And so circulation is something that we're really interested in and have begun to give a lot of thought to. And finally, you know, there's not only the connect the dots part of movement and of pedestrian circulation, there's also the experiential dimension. And so we've begun to give some thought to the quality of the experience of moving. You know, what is it like to move down the slope? 
is it a direct experience? Is it an indirect experience? Is it a formal experience? Is it an informal experience? Uh, and we'll look forward to talking to you today about some of those kinds of things. And this is an early image that we developed where you can see a sort of informal gesture of, that allows people to move up and down between the tunnel tops and the learning landscape. There are a couple of key programmatic facilities that we also want to talk a bit about with you today as well. And I wanted to drill down on both of those uh, just a little bit. The first is this idea of a visitor center complex or a base camp. In the current scheme, it's called the Zocalo, but it's this place where every visitor, we hope, will begin and maybe end their Presidio visitor experience. You know, that it has that critical mass of facilities that visitors need to enjoy the Presidio. This is something that has come up over and over again, particularly in our discussions with visitors that aren't currently familiar with or commonly using the Presidio. I think as everyone knows, we've gone out into the community and we've begun to have a conversation with the public about how we can make the Presidio more welcoming to people that aren't currently using the Presidio. And one of the things that's come up over and over again is the idea that people don't know where to begin their Presidio experience and they don't know where to get the tools they need to enjoy this place, whether it's a transit map, whether it's a bottle of water, um, whether it's the main Presidio trailhead. And our goal in order to make this place as visitor friendly as possible is to bring all those things together in vicinity of this visitor center base camp type concept. So, and this is another image. And this is a space where more than the rest of the site, we imagine bringing some of the vitality of the main post down into the site. Because one of the other things that we've heard from many members of the public is that one of the things that makes them feel welcome is to see people like themselves, is to see some activity. And we know that we don't want the entire parkland site to be overrun. We've heard a lot of concern expressed about it becoming too active. There's a real desire that there, you be able to have the experience of serenity and enjoy the openness of the site. So we believe that we can bring and concentrate some of the visitor activity, some of the public programs in the vicinity of the Zocalo in order to make that part of the parkland site more welcoming. So the second really important programmatic element of this project is the new youth campus in the learning landscape. And I just wanted to talk for a little bit about that. I think as everyone knows, one of the key audiences that we're trying to serve in the Presidio are young people, are children from throughout our community. To bring them into the Presidio, to give them a series of really rich experiences throughout their childhood that connects them to their natural and cultural heritage. This is a fundamental objective of all three of our organizations. Um, and the Presidio, because it's so multidimensional and rich in terms of its history and ecology, is the most magnificent platform for educating young people. And in the same way that we need a visitor center for first-time visitors to the Presidio coming from, you know, Omaha or coming from, you know, around the world, coming from, you know, the East Bay, we also, for, for many years, have believed that it's important to have a first-time portal for those young people who are coming. Young people are a particular audience. They need a particular kinds of programmatic infrastructure. And the Chrissy Field Center has functioned for many years as that portal to the park and to, hopefully, a lifelong series of national park experiences. Our goal has been to increase the ability of that facility to serve young people. It serves about 20,000 young people a year. We'd like to grow that to about 50,000 so that we can really begin to create the kind of programmatic infrastructure needed to really serve all the young people in our community. And so the opportunity of this project is to take that building and take this site and use it as a platform for expanded environmental education programming. And you know, we do that by creating immersive learning environment that connects people to both the history and ecology of the Presidio. One of the interesting opportunities about this particular site if you think about it, the role it has played in the life of the Presidio through time, it's the place where the bay meets the upland. It's the place where the Native American community lived, where they buried their dead, where there was probably a village site. It's where fresh water meets salt water, so ecologically it's very rich and very interesting interface. It's the place where early explorers landed to get permission to explore the Presidio or come into the bay. And so ecologically, it's a very, very interesting, and historically, a very interesting site. And we can use that rich layering of stories as a platform for educating young people about their heritage, natural and cultural. So today, just in conclusion, um, we'd like to talk to you about these layers, and we'd like to hear your thoughts about them. 
there are a whole array of key variables in this project. I mean, the, the thing about this project that's interesting is it's, it's primarily an open space project. It's, it's really a park making project. But as you know, the Presidio is one of those parks that is incredibly diverse in the kinds of physical expression of parks and park making. There are places that are active, there are places that are not so active, there are places that are serene, there are places for families, um, there are places that are wild feeling, there are places that are uh, historic, there are places that are urbane, um, there are paths and benches and picnic tables, there are programmatic facilities where people learn about the Presidio's history and its ecology. And each of these is a different layer, if you will, a different kind of programmatic layer, uh, experiential layer in the life of the post. And what we're really most interested in is imagining with you how this site can connect and complete those different layers in the Presidio, the circulation layer, the experiential layer. And that's really most fundamentally what we're talking about today. So with that, I'd like to invite everybody to come to the back of the room. We have a whole collection of staff stationed back there. They're incredibly well informed about the project. And so we can answer your questions. We have uh, a number of people from Jim Corner's team here today as well. And there are a series of different stations that are focused on different aspects of the project. And we'd really like to have a conversation with you in more detail and get your reactions to some of these ideas.